here. I'm not sure if we drew the ultimate short straw or the absolute vote of confidence here to confidence, confidence. get the last agenda item of the meeting. Uh, we'll begin uh, with going ahead and taking an approval of the agenda as presented. Are there any changes to the agenda that's been presented? I'll simply offer that it is my hope to bump these time up a little bit. We'll do the best we can. Seeing no changes to the agenda, is there any objection to accepting the agenda as presented? Seeing none, the agenda is accepted. Our next order of business is to approve the proceedings from the May 2017 board meeting. Is there any objection to accepting those minutes? Seeing none, the previous proceedings stand accepted. Next order of business is public comment for any items that are not on the agenda. We have no one signed up. We have no hands up. We'll move along. Just like that, we're 14 minutes ahead of schedule. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to agenda item number four. Consider amendment one for final approval. Uh, before we go ahead and get started with presentations, uh, I'll first offer a word of thanks to uh, Ashton Harp for her efforts in helping get us to this point. Uh, apparently, we scared her all the way across the country. Uh, but we have Tony Kearns standing in today. Thank you, Tony, for your help in the last couple weeks and seeing this uh, item through. Uh, I'll note that there's been some communication that's been sent out this week uh, to members of the board regarding our plans. Uh, we do have this item here for final action today, so that is an option. Uh, however, as per the memo that was sent out uh, through a combination of summer schedules and response to public comment, there's been requests from just about every state involved in this amendment process for a little bit more time to develop some options. So what our goal here today is going to be to go through the presentations as we have them, uh, we'll review the presentation for the amendment, uh, review the public comment presentations, AP report, uh, law enforcement report, uh, and then we'll go through the document. Uh, we've had sent around a set of the items we would definitely like to see action taken on here today. We'll have discussion about those items that we think could wait until the annual meeting uh, with potentially not taking final action until then, but it will ultimately be up to the board. Any questions about what we hope to do here today? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and turn the mic over to Tony to present the presentation on the amendment, followed by public comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And what I've done is I've actually combined the presentation of the options and the public comment into one to be most efficient. Um, and I did pull, um, the, as Adam mentioned, there were some items that we've had some requests from states to do delays on basically most of Section 4.2, which is all of the um, uh, regional management measures. So I pulled the public comment slides from those here. If you want me to go over them today, I can, or I can wait to go over them at the next meeting when we actually are considering those options. So. For now, I'm not going to go through what the public comment was on those unless I'm asked to. Um, all right, so moving on. Um, even though it says we had 100 and something comments in my summary, I apologize for the bad math. We really only had 36 written comments. 21 of those were from individuals, eight were from groups, and two were form letters. Um, those form letters totaled seven comments. We also had one petition with 317 signatures on it. Um, the document um, is a full amendment. It has uh, revised goals and objectives. Um, biological reference points, options for fishing mortality targets, probabilities of achieving the F target, F reduction schedules, and stock rebuilding uh, schedules all in section two. 
Um, so first, the management document, um, the goal is to sustainably manage to TOG over the long term using regional differences in biology and fishery characteristics as the basis for the management. Additionally, the amendment seeks to promote in conservation of enhanced and structured habitat to meet the needs of all life stages of the TOG. Um, so that is what the revised goal is. Um, there's two options, either to maintain the 1996 goal or to approve the revised goal. Um, there were five written comments in favor of the um, 1996 goal and two comments for in favor of the revised. In, in general, the um, state of Rhode Island and Maryland were in favor of the revised goals and the state of Massachusetts was in favor of the um, status quo goals. I was not at the public hearing, so I had to take the notes from the summaries to try to figure out counts and numbers. If I couldn't figure out exact counts from those hearings, I just put X's where I thought there was general favorability for something. So I apologize in advance if I misinterpreted what happened at your hearings, but it was hard for me since I was not there. For, um, I thought I'll go through the whole thing. Dan, did you have Just a, a point of clarification, Tony, you said that the, the state had a position, but I think what you meant is people at a hearing in that state had a position, right? Correct, the people okay. at the, the hearings Thanks. in those okay. states. Um, for objectives, um, the uh, objectives options were to either maintain the 1996 objectives, um, options B through G were specific um, modifications to objectives, um, and option H would insert all of the modifications to the identified options in B through G. Um, there were five written comments in favor of maintaining the 1996 objectives, um, as well as um, five individuals that had a range of um, favoring any of the options of B through G one individual that favored changing all of the objectives and the state of Maryland's hearing attendees were in favor of changing all of the objectives, option H. For biological reference points, the document had um, two options. One is to stay status quo. Um, the reference points can be modified via management document. And the second option was reference points can be modified via board action. Um, the TC or SAS could make a recommendation to alternative reference points as long as the modification to the status determination and criteria and their associated values were the result of a peer-reviewed um, stock assessment. Um, in response to that, the, the board could take action to set new reference points based on that peer-reviewed results. Um, for the comments, we had um, nine comments in favor of maintaining that reference points had to be modified via management document and two commenters in favor of making changes um, via board action. For the mortality targets, um, option A is status quo. We would have a coast-wide fishing mortality target and option B is to manage the regional target um, based on F. Um, the, if the um, current F exceeds the regional threshold, um, the board would have to take corrective action via management document within a certain time period. There's three sub-options here for the B option, one being no time requirement, two being action within a year, and three being action within two years. Um, based on the um, requests from the states to delay some actions, it was staff's recommendation to not take action on the actual sub-options here today, but you could um, make a determination of whether or not you wanted to manage based on a coast-wide F or a regional F, just as an FYI. So public comment here, we had eight people in favor, or eight commenters in favor of option A, um, a coast-wide target, and we had 10 people in favor of um, regional F targets. 
one person thought we should um, not have a time frame and then three people plus um, the folks at the Virginia hearing were in favor of the uh, one year and seven people were in favor of action within two years. So next is looking at the probability of achieving the F target. There's two options, status quo and a 50% probability of achieving an F target. Currently, under status quo, there would be no probability associated. So we had um, uh, 10 people in favor of remaining status quo and um, five people in favor of the 50% probability as well as the um, folks at the Rhode Island hearing were in favor of the 50% probability. Next is looking at the F reduction schedule. Um, this sets a time frame for which the board initiates a harvest reduction um, for the management response. Um, so option A is looking at status quo. Um, there is no time frame. Option B is three years and option C is five years. For the written comments, we, um, or for the commenters, we had three people in favor of three years plus the folks at the mass hearing and eight people in favor of five years. For the, um, how the stock rebuilding schedule is developed, we have option A, status quo. Um, there's no required management response if SSB is below the threshold. Option B is a stock rebuilding schedule can be developed via an addendum. And option C, similar, it would be developed via an addendum, but it would not exceed um, 10 years. There's no time frame associated with option B. We had seven folks in favor of option A, status quo, no management response required. Um, for B, we had five people in favor plus the individuals at the mass hearing and option C, the um, addendum with the time frame of 10 years with three individuals. Moving on to section four, which is the management measures. Um, for today, I think there's just a couple of things we're looking at here. First, the concept of whether or not we would manage via coastwide management, which is status quo option A, or whether the board would move to regional management based on the stock assessments, and it would be the four regions the Mass Rhode Island, and then Long Island Sound, the New York, New Jersey Bight, and the Delmarva area. Um, for, for option A, status quo coastwide management, um, all of the participants at the New York hearing, which was roughly 80 individuals, were in favor, um, plus then the seven other commenters, as well as the individuals at the Connecticut hearing, which and then for regional management, those individuals at the Mass and Rhode Island hearings expressed interest as well. And then, um, sorry, I didn't total these up, so I'm counting in my head as I speak. <laughs> uh, it's 23 individuals were in favor of regional management. Um, and then, in, if regional management is chosen, then looking at Long Island Sound and determining where we would want to break the boundaries for um, that Long Island Sound management over the, um, on the edges. Um, in both the Connecticut and New York hearings, they were not in favor as, uh, with regional management. And so, or in the New York and New Jersey hearings, they were not in favor of New regional management, so they did not comment on which option they favored on where the split should occur. Um, and one, one of the folks at the Connecticut um, hearing, they said either would work, as well as um, the AP um, members were also concurring with that exact sentiment that happened at the hearings as well. Looking at commercial quota, um, option A is status quo. We would not have any specified procedures to do commercial quotas. Option B puts forward commercial quota procedures. A state or region w could implement an annual commercial quota um, following the procedures that are identified in the document and board approval is granted. 
um, the decision making to include a quota could be within that regional group and then they would also have to make decisions about quota rollover transfers and how to deal with overages if a quota is utilized. So for what we heard from the commenters, um, there were six people in favor of status quo do not establish quota procedures. And then there were four people in favor of establishment of quota procedures and the folks at the Maryland hearing were generally in favor of this. And then next is looking at a possible commercial harvest tagging program, um, whether or not we would implement one or not. Um, status quo would be no tagging program, and option B would be to implement a harvest tagging program. The individuals at the New York hearing were not in favor of a tagging program, and there were eight commenters in favor of and then for option, or not in favor of, for option B, individuals at the Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and hearings were generally in favor, and then we had 12 individuals that wrote in or commented specifically in favor. And then lastly is looking at how those tags would get applied. Um, the tags could be applied either with the harvester application or either at harvest or prior to offloading either would suffice under this option or under option B the application would be done by the dealer. The majority of the commenters were in favor of either harvester application at harvest or prior to offloading. Um, those individuals at the mass hearings were the only ones that commented in favor of application by the dealer. Um, also in general, some of the comments that were heard were folks were in favor of recreational and commercial spawning closures. Pot restrictions um, are needed pot, um, as well for the pots that fish for Tatog constantly all the time, as well as there should be artificial reef programs funded that would help support Tatog habitat and um, help to rebuild the stock. Um, and then because we have had the request to delay specifically the regional management measures to, in order to have some additional time to either develop additional options, um, try to come to consistency, or to spread out the time frame in which some of the reductions need to be occurring, in particular in the Long Island Sound area, um, today what we're looking to do is approve some of the options and then come back in October, look at the remaining options and make choices and then do a final approval of the document in October. Um, Mark would have the law enforcement committee report if there are no questions on the actual public comments. Okay, so thank you for that, Tony. Uh, before we go forward with the next report, let me ask if there's any objection to ending that presentation there and not covering those items that we don't expect to have final action on until the annual meeting, which would be the individual regional measures. Does anybody feel the need to see those presentations today or those can wait till planned decision making on that? Okay, not seeing any objection to continuing as we are. Uh, so let me stop there for a moment. Are there any questions for Tony about the information presented about the contents of the amendment sections as presented or about the public comment? Raymond Cain. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tony, can you go back to that slide where we're talking about the tagging program, please? Do you want the, the application or the actual tagging program? Uh, the application. Yes, so uh, I see where the loan state. Uh, can, you, can the other states give us a suggestion at this table right now how they would plan on distributing tags to individual harvesters? So that might be something I could take back to our harvesters.
Well, I think that would be a question for the board if there's anybody wants to chime in on that right now or when we get to the section and decision making on that and we get a motion up, we would expect further discussion at that point, right? Thank you. Any additional questions right now? Dan? Not to rush ahead on this, but uh, when would uh, Tony like the states to submit the, um, the proposals for the biological measures? So the, revi the revised proposals? Yes. So, sorry. so it's probably me more than Tony. Uh, what my intention is, is once we go through these items that we can hopefully come to decisions on today, will be to just go back to each of those sections and just generally bring the board up to speed on what each of those regions is discussing. I think the goal would need by the middle of September to answer your question directly, and I'll reiterate that again, whatever revised proposals, that would be a timeline we'd be looking at. And again, my intent is to come back to each of those sections and just see if there's any general questions and make sure everybody's on board with how each region is hoping to proceed. Joe? Thanks, Mr. Chair. So then uh, um, with that timeline is the idea that once they're received, that the technical committee will have a chance to review, but we, the first time we will see, the board will see them, is that the November meeting? So the intent would be for TC to review them. Now, whether these proposals are developed with TC membership as part of that decision-making process and get a general sense from the TC that that's acceptable review or whether we submit the entire proposals for a formal TC review, I think is going to depend on the scope of what we get back at that point. Uh, we can certainly go ahead and distribute those items for review prior to the board meeting, which would be one of the goals of getting those ironed out with substantial time left prior to the annual meeting. Any other questions before we go to Mark? Okay, Mark, law enforcement report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, we have provided a written memo uh, for you, should have been in the, in the briefing package, uh, summarizing uh, law enforcement committee comments. Um, ba the, the date of the memo is July 11th, but it actually covers a series of, of opportunities for the LEC to review this issue uh, in regards to defining a boundary line between, uh, for the eastern end of, of Long Island Sound, which was first brought to us by Ashton back in March on a tele teleconference call, and then at our May meeting, um, we had an opportunity to actually look at some maps and discuss it at the LEC meeting uh, in more, more detail. And then once again, um, in follow-up on a June 29th teleconference call. So at that last teleconference call, we basically reiterated the position that we had taken previously, um, expressing some, uh, some precaution, precautionary uh, comments regarding how do you establish a line across open water that is clearly definable and clear to the fishermen and also uh, supportable in, in court cases. Um, once we looked at the two options for drawing that line on the east end of Long Island Sound, uh, we suggested that both were acceptable but it would be preferable uh, at the time, we called it option six. I believe now in the document it's option B2, sub-option B2, uh, because that line has a few more island or land-based references that you can use for line of sight, making it a little bit clearer when you're trying to define where somebody is fishing either on one side of the line or the other, which is important in making court cases. Um, and again, some of the concern for this line in general was that you are looking at potentially different regulations in Long Island Sound, the ocean side of Long Island, and perhaps even in Rhode Island waters. Uh, you do, uh, LEC members familiar with those waters report that vessels, both recreational and commercial, are regularly uh, moving back and forth among those three areas. 
So depending on what kind of uh, differences in regulations occur, um, that could have a bearing on how many resources are going to be required to maintain um, uh, coverage for that for that boundary line at the least at the last at the east end of Long Island Sound. Um, having uh, that kind of segues into the the other option that we did comment on, and that's regarding the commercial tagging program. And of course, uh, we've been working uh, with the law enforcement subcommittee on the tagging issue. We still continue to support commercial tagging for Tatog. And in particular, uh, with this particular um, uh, document, um, we also wanted to reiterate that, particularly in a case where you have this eastern end of Long Island Sound and you have vessels moving back and forth in different zones, uh, once again reinforces the point that we were making that the sooner that those fish are tagged from the point of harvest, the better. And so our recommendation would continue to be that um, you adopt a, a, a provision to have those fish tagged uh, as close to the point of harvest as possible, recognizing that that may in the end not be possible. But uh, there were a lot of concerns expressed by the LEC members with any dealer tagging uh, as really reducing your ability to, to, to monitor uh, compliance with those tag requirements. And that all of that is, again, summarized in the uh, July 11th memo, and uh, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for that report. Any questions on the law enforcement report? Eric Reed. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one question. If you look at page uh, 69, you have Long Island, option, Long Island Sound option 5 and Long Island Sound option 6. And you prefer option six, is that what I'm getting out of that? And then if you look at New Jersey, New York bite option five, it's different from Long Island option six. They're two different they're two different things. Well, uh, at the May meeting we looked at two maps where we were identified as option five and option six. I just noticed in the presentation today that it looked like they were identified as sub options B one and B two. Sub option B two where the line is for the Long Island Sound boundary uh, is drawn using those those points of land and the islands there. That's the one that, that law enforcement would prefer. Both of them are acceptable. They are going to create some enforcement challenges. So in the document itself, Eric, Long Island Sound option five is sub option B1. The graphic labeled Long Island Sound option five is text sub option B1 and graphic labeled Long Island Sound option six is labeled as sub option two and I believe law enforcement has expressed a preference or at least has offered some advantages for what's text labeled sub option two and graphically labeled Long Island Sound option six. Okay Mr. Chairman I appreciate that but so basically New, New Jersey New York bite option five is not what law enforcement prefers at this time. So when you're looking at the New York, New Jersey bite option five, you would only be looking at the purple area there? Yeah, but it's not, it's not the same as what they prefer. Option, Tony? What, what the one they prefer has uh, basically the, the, the range of islands. They're different. They're different. I will help out. Eric, I think that when, when they, we, I'm not, I can't remember who actually created these charts for us, but when they were originally created, um, we had only had the first Long Island Sound option five, and so they just automatically created the New York, New Jersey bite based off of how we split Long Island Sound. So whatever we decide to do with Long Island Sound, the New York, New Jersey bite map will be altered appropriately to account either for that extra um, water body um, within the bite um, or not. We didn't have the person recreate another map for us since they had already done a lot of work for us. Mark? And again, um, the reason they like that what's sub-option B2 there better than one is because it does have that chain of islands, so you have more line of sight on a line. 
Plus, I believe that's the option that, in, that is essentially the coal regs line, which is, is something a little easier to manage. Yes. So I can certainly understand your confusion, Eric, and the reality is that there's essentially two options for New York, New Jersey bite based on what would be selected for Long Island Sound. We good? Okay. Thanks for that. Any additional questions? Okay. Seeing none, I believe that will take us into discussion about the document. Uh, again, uh, Tony was kind enough to send an email around that basically itemized what sections, which apples we're going to take bites at here today. Uh, we'll go through each section. Uh, we'll get that slide back up on the screen. We will need a motion for each item. Each of these individual items will simply require, uh, I'll ask for whether or not there's any objections on those uh, or not. Uh, and we'll see what progress we can make. So the first item we'd like to tackle would be reflected in pages 48 and 49 of the amendment itself, which if I jump over to the meeting materials, again, keep in mind the page and the PDF may be different, uh, but these will actually be 48 and 49 in the amendment itself. So we'll start out with the goals. Uh, we've got two options here. Option A for status quo, which would be to maintain the 96 goals. Option B, the revised goal statement as written in the amendment. Discussion and or a motion on how to proceed with this section. I'll turn to John Clark. Uh, move to approve option B, revised goal statement in section 2.2. Do we have a second to that? Seconded by Mike Luisi. We'll get that up on the board here in just a moment. And while he's getting that up on the board, on the back table there's a cheat sheet of all of the items in the in the document. If anybody needs that, staff could run over and grab those and get them, or you could run over and grab them. It doesn't matter um, if anybody needs one. And there's also copies of the um, draft, just the short version of the draft document, so you only have the stuff that we're actually um, taking up to vote if you wanted that to cheat on as well. 30 seconds to grab cheat sheets. Okay, while we're grabbing cheat sheets, I'll turn for discussion on this motion. Emerson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, does option B um, lock us into regional management? I mean, option B says that we will use regional differences in biology and fishery characteristics or whatever the exact language is as a basis for management. <coughs> So does that, does that lock us into regional management? It is my understanding that while it does in fact use those terms, it does not. We still have to select or have the option to select regional options moving forward. I would just offer that should we do something when we get to the regional management section, which we do intend to tackle today, that that may cause reconsideration on this topic. But it doesn't specifically lock us into it. Again, it's a goal. A goal doesn't necessarily mean it's what we do immediately but something this board's talked about striving for. Additional questions about this motion? OK, 
Okay, I'll read the motion. Move to approve option B, revised goal statement in section 2.2. Motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Mr. Luisi. I'll give us five seconds to caucus. All right, let me ask, is there any objection to this motion? We're going to give this 30 more seconds. All right, here, here's the route I'm gonna take given the discussion I see going on around the room. We're going to do this with a show of hands. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Put your hands down, please. Anyone opposed to the motion, raise your right hand. Any null votes? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much. Next section will be 2.3, objectives. Uh, here we have one course of action would be option A, status quo, maintain the 1996 objectives, okay? And then we have a series of other options, which are options B through H, B through G, take individual actions with the objectives. Option H incorporates all of the changes that are incorporated in B through G. So our options for action on this item would be option A, status quo, option H, which incorporates everything, or some combination of B through G. Those would be our three courses of action in this section. Discussion and or a motion on this section. I'll turn to John Clark. Move to approve option H, accept options B through G into section 2.3 objectives. Okay, motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Eric Reed. Discussion on the motion to accept option H, which would accept options B through G for the objectives. Okay, seeing no hands, I'll read the entirety again. Move to approve option H, accept options B through G into section 2.3 objectives. Motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Mr. Reed. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, is there any objection to this motion? Seeing no objection, the motion is approved by consent. Thank you very much. All right, our next section will be section 2.5, biological reference points. And just for clarity's sake, we're not actually selecting biological reference points here. What we're specifying is how biological reference points can be modified moving forward. We've got two options here. Reference points would be required to go through a management document, which would be an addendum or an amendment. And option B, which would allow reference points to be modified via board action. 
Uh, pages 53 to 54 basically spell out what that process might be, including how we would review scientific advice, peer review, uh, et cetera. I'd also like to point out that by selecting option B, this would not preclude the board from initiating a management document an addendum or an amendment, should there feel the need that that change in reference point is significant enough that we need to go through some public process. So do I have any discussion on this section or a motion on these options? Okay, first hand up I saw was Roy Miller. I move to accept option B. Reference points can be modified via board action. Okay, I have a motion for option B. Do I have a second for that? Seconded by Emerson Hasbrook. Give staff a moment to get that up on the board. Also offer Delaware a word of thanks for taking the initiative on moving this along. Okay, so we have a motion move to approve option B in section 2.5 biological reference points. Motion by Mr. Miller, seconded by Mr. Hasbrook. Discussion on the motion. Okay, seeing no hands up, is there any objection to the motion? Seeing none, motion stands approved by consent. All right, our next item will be section 2.7.1, fishing mortality target. So again, this is not an item where we're selecting a specific F, but what we're selecting here would be how the board would respond to scientific advice that we get that would call for a change to F. So we've got option A, status quo, coastwide fishing mortality cannot exceed the F target of 0 0.15. That would be the first option. Option B would be managing to a regional F target and selection of option B would require selection of a time requirement either no time requirement in B1, B2, board action within one year, and board action within two years. I'd just like to turn to staff for a moment to get clarification where these items state the board must initiate corrective action via management document within either one year or two years that would not call for that management action necessarily being completed in that time, nor would it call for that management action having those impacts go into effect. So typically we go through an addendum process, takes multiple meetings, and then has an implementation date. So just to be clear, it's my understanding that both of these options would allow for the completion of those documents and the implementation date to go beyond these time frames, but these specifically call for when those documents would be initiated. You are correct, Adam. Okay, hope that's clear. Discussion or a motion on this section? I looked left, but I'm pulled back right. John Clark. <laughs> I've got the motion sheet in front of me, so I'd, I'd like to move to approve uh, option B, managing to the regional target F, and, oh, am I on the right one? Yes, okay, and sub option B2, board action within one year in section 2.7.1, fishing mortality target. Okay, motion by Mr. Clark for option B, managing to regional target F with sub option B2, board action within one year. I have a second from Bob Ballou. We'll get that up on the board.
While that's going up, discussion. Mike Luisi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a question. Um, because assessments, we're not going to know F each and every year. Um, if three years go by and we look back in retrospect to an assessment update and we notice that a year prior to the terminal year, F exceeded the threshold. However, the terminal year of the assessment, F is maybe between the target and the threshold or even below the target. Are, are we going to be inclined to go forward with some type of action? Would, 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 selecting, um, these, would the, selecting this option, uh, would a trigger be set in the event that the terminal year F is not above the threshold, yet a prior year is? It's just having dealt with this with striped bass and the ongoing saga about where we stand regarding fishing mortality, I just, for, for my own edification, I'd like to understand how this, uh, how assessments would be applied to, to this option. Thanks. So I'm going to first say that the document specifies current F. But for clarity on what current F is, I'll turn to Tony. I'm going to let Katie give me a head nod. Um, but I believe what the TC has been doing is using the average of the last three years to give you your current F. So your current F would be the average of the last three years. Joe is giving me a head nod. <laughs> Katie's coming to a microphone. I told her I wouldn't need her, but I guess I was wrong. No, yes, it is the average of the last three years, but it would be the so it would be the la average. So, for example, if you if the assessment ended in 2015, it would be the average of 15, 14, and 13 would be your would be the value that you would compare and need to bring down. So my interpretation of that is if the F in one of those years. That would not be enough to trigger this management action. We would need the average of those three years, which we would call the current F, which is what the document refers to. Yes, that is correct. That's the most current information we can give you. Dan McKiernan? That's a great explanation, but is it necessary for folks who are going to read this document months and years from now to, to somehow have that in the document, that F is going to be um, calculated on a three-year moving average? I, well, can, I can add it in. I guess the question would be, since we're not planning to take final action today, to either add that in or do we leave that out should there be some future review of how the TC calculates current F, i.e. average of a longer period or a shorter period or something else. So I think that would be the question, is that yes, we could put it in here so we clearly know, or perhaps we could reflect that as of this document, current F, the TC uses average of the last three years, but that may be subject to change in the future. Is there a preference from the board on how we outline that right now? Because again, we, we got an answer today, and I think that's very good to have that written in Microsoft Word or Adobe PDF, uh, but that may change in the future. Katie? I think to that point, the Part of the reason that we are able to or allowed to is that three-year average was approved by the peer review process. So if we get to, if we go through another benchmark process and the definition of what the F should be changes based on peer review advice, then maybe we would not want to include it and just understand that current F is the reflection of the best available advice coming out of the stock assessment, whatever that is. Okay, so what's the pleasure of the board? A uh, couple options I see here are one, to add nothing additional and just leave it as current F. Another option would be to include information that, it, that refers specifically to the three-year average. And then the question beyond that would be whether or not we're going to 
include in the document that that's just currently has it done and it may change in the future. I saw Emerson's hand. Yeah, my hand was up for another issue, so why don't you resolve this first and then I'll and then come back to me. Thank you. John, I saw your hand on this. Same thing. I just realized the motion didn't include one part of this part of the document. Whether this is um, status quo or we're going to put a probability of a 50% probability of achieving F without having that in there, I assume it defaults to status quo. Our goal is to make a decision on that at the annual meeting because that will impact the projections. Eric Reed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That being said, why don't we just leave it the way it is because we can always fix it at the annual meeting. Okay, so I've got a recommendation to just leave the document as is referencing current F and we've got a matter of record the discussion here today. Okay, not seeing any desire to change that. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Emerson Hasbrook. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I have a question and then I have um, a motion. So my question is for both the status quo option and option B, where does that leave us if F is between the threshold and the target? Because right? they're both managing to the target, right? If it, it, we can't exceed F target, but the F value can be higher, can exceed the F target value, but still be below the threshold. So the, right? doc so the document offers that if current F exceeds the regional threshold, the board will take steps to reduce F to the regional target level with the timeline that we have in the motion. If the current F exceeds the target but is below the threshold, which is I think the area to which you're referring, the board should consider steps to reduce F. Should, not, shall, not required to, and no specific timeline. So that's what we have currently, is if it's in that area that I think you're referring to, the advice that the board should take action but no further specific direction. Right, thank you for clarifying that. So I understand that for option B. So under, under option A, which is status quo, where are, what happens if F is between the, the target and the threshold? Because it says it shall not exceed F target, but we can be below the threshold, but the value is still gonna be above the target. Tony? There is no threshold in the old amendment. It's just a target. That is all there was. So there is only a coast-wide target, and if you went above, then you had to take action. There was no. This, remember, this plan has not been modified since 1996. So we had a single F. When we would get a new benchmark, the board would consider taking action based on that benchmark. That's what we've been doing for the last, well, not me, that's what the board's been doing for the last 20 years. Working so, on getting there. So then my motion then is to, whatever the proper wording is, delay. Uh, I don't want to say table this motion, but to delay action on this motion. I'm getting a sense you actually want to postpone it. Postpone, thank you to postpone um, action on this amendment, or this issue, rather, not on the amendment, on this specific issue until we've decided what we're doing with regional management. I, I think in a way we're, we're putting the cart before the horse a little bit here. Right, because this says that we're going to, that we're gonna manage to the regional target F. 
and we haven't had any discussion about regionality yet, other than the question I asked before. Okay, so motion to postpone action on this issue until the board decides on regional, whether we're managing this regionally? Is that what you're looking for? So in that case, I would actually recommend a motion to table since we plan to decide on regions today, we're going to have that discussion. So if you'd like to do so, I would entertain, entertain a motion to table this. Uh, and we've got one other section to get through and we would then come back to this if you'd like to do that. Yeah, whatever proper under Robert's rules. So what Emerson's proposing is that we table action on this motion until we get through section 4.1, which we hope to get through today, which would be the regional boundaries decision. So we've got a motion to table. We need a second and just a reminder that that would not be debatable. We would immediately vote on that. Motion to table action on this issue until board decides on regional management, section 4.1, motion by Mr. Hasbrook. Seconded by Mr. Ballou. Okay, again, there will be no discussion on this. Uh, I'll ask, is there any objection to doing so? All right, seeing none, uh, the motion to table passes and we will temporarily move on from Mr. Clark's motion. All right, so the next item uh, going through here sequentially again was probability of achieving F target, which again, uh, as per the discussion we had just a moment ago, uh, the plan is to not tackle that today unless there's anyone who wishes to do otherwise. Okay, and not seeing any inclination to do so. Uh, the next section in the document would be 2.7.2, uh, the F reduction schedule. Uh, this is another area that we felt left, was best left to the annual meeting, uh, which would provide some opportunity to develop those other options we've mentioned. Uh, so unless there's any objection, we're going to hold off on 2.7.2 until the annual meeting. All right, seeing no objection, that will bring us to 2.7.4 on page 56 of the amendment, stock rebuilding schedule. Uh, again, the stock rebuilding schedule here, this section seeks primarily to define how the management action would be to achieve that rebuilding. And then the second, so the first option is status quo, no management responses if SSB is below the threshold. Option B is a stock rebuilding schedule could be developed via addendum. And then option C would say the rebuilding schedule can be developed via addendum, but that rebuilding schedule could not exceed 10 years. Discussion or a motion on this section? John Clark. I'll try to get it right this time. I move to approve option B in section 2.74 stock rebuilding schedule. Motion from Mr. Clark in 2.74. Option B, a stock for building schedule can be developed by an addendum, and that would not have a timeline on that rebuilding schedule. Do I have a second for that motion? Dan McKiernan. Discussion on the motion. Bob Blue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just ask the maker of the motion uh, why you would not uh, opt for option C, uh, and that would uh, provide for a uh, rebuilding schedule that would not exceed 10 years. I'm just curious as to your reasoning for not uh, favoring that approach. John? Well, 
just personally that when I looked at these, I mean, we have not, we've made a decision with this amendment not to manage to rebuilding SSB, but to manage F, at least my understanding of it is. So I didn't, I mean, granted, 10 years is not really putting us in any type of straitjacket at all, but I just figured it's optional no matter what, but at least this gets us beyond the status quo of not having to do anything about SSP. This gives us the option to do something about SSP, but I'm not, if the board decides that they'd rather go with option C, that's fine with me also. Mark Alexander. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I support this option. I, I think even 10 years for a fish with the life history of the tog is, um, could challenge us at times. So I, I, I think this would be appropriate option. Emerson Hasbrook. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would also like to move to table this, table action on this motion until we've decided uh, what we're gonna do with regional, regional management. This option specifically says the management board will evaluate the current estimates of SSB with respect to the regional reference points. Okay, so that would be the next topic. So we've got a motion from Mr. Hasbrook to table this motion until we decide on regional management section 4.1. Is there a second to the motion to table? Bob Blue. Okay, this motion is non-debatable. Is there any objection to the motion to table? Okay, seeing none, we're queuing things up like arrows in a quiver here. Hopefully we can get them all to come out as quick as we did the earlier ones. Okay, well that brings us to the regional boundaries, 4.1. That'll be 65 and 66 in the document. So our first option here is status quo to stay with coastwide management. Option B would be regional management, the four region approach. Again, I'll remind the board that we had an awful lot of discussion about three versus four regions. The four region approach was what has already been decided on as going forward in the document. Uh, there's pretty much no going back on that in this document at this point. Uh, so that's what we would be deciding on. Uh, and so we'll take those two options up first. And then once that decision has been made, if option B is selected, we would then go ahead and decide on B1 or B2. I understand that votes on the first part may be contingent upon that, so I would entertain a motion that specifies both selecting whether you want status quo or regional management, and if you select option B, I would encourage inclusion of the selection of the sub-option at the same time since I think that's going to help inform that decision for people. Discussion or a motion? John Maniscalco, welcome. I uh, move to uh, make a motion to adopt option A, status quo, coastwide measures. Coastwide management. Move to adopt option A, status quo. Do I have a second to that motion? All right, I'll ask one more time. Is there a second to the motion? Okay, seeing none, that motion fails for lack of a second. Floor is open. John Clark. Um, move to approve option B, regional management, and sub option B2 in section 4.1, regional boundaries. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Clark 
to approve option B, regional management, and sub-option B2, which would set the Long Island Sound boundary from Orient to Watch Hill. Do I have a second for that motion? Joe Semino. Sorry, Russ, we'll get you for one of these. <laughs> Discussion on the motion. Mark Alexander. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Connecticut and New York hope to, in their deliberations on, on a proposal that will bring forth in October, um, may want to have some discussions about the boundary and, and, and how that may uh, ease our transition into a 47 percent reduction. So uh, I would not like to take action on what the boundary is at this meeting. So I'd like to make a motion to amend uh, to remove uh, the words and sub-option B2 from this motion. Okay, I uh, have a motion from Mr. Alexander to remove sub-option B2. Uh, and again, uh, if I'm understanding your intent right now would be to remove that now with a pending discussion on that and decision at the annual meeting. Yes, Mr. Chair, that is correct. Do I have a second to that motion? Eric Reed. Let me ask the board, given that we've had some discussion and that original motion is the property of the board, is there any objection from the original maker or anyone else from the board about making that modification? No objection. I just had a question for Mark. If Is option B1 what the uh, New York and Connecticut are considering, or is it something different from that also? Um, this is based on a discussion I had with Jim right before he had to leave, so I don't have a lot of answers to that. Perhaps John does, but uh, Jim, as I understood it, did indicate to me that uh, we would like to at least maintain the possibility of, 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 of the boundary line consideration you know, during our discussions. So, Mark, let me ask you this. I'm assuming, did he leave it with there's discussion that you'd like to have or were there specific points offered? And I would ask that question because from my perspective, we basically have a range right now of Orient in the West and Montauk in the East. So is it your understanding that some other point is to be discussed or is it your belief that that point for discussion would be between those two points? There were no specific uh, alternatives indicated to me, so my, my understanding is that we just don't want this solidified at this moment uh, and that it would be helpful if, if, if it remains an option to be considered uh, dur during our discussions. So we would certainly have the opportunity to go back, um, reconsider. I mean, the goal is to take action on these items and hopefully not have to reconsider any of them at the annual meeting. That would certainly be the goal, but none of these are final actions here today. Uh, it would be my belief, and I'll let staff chime in if they feel somehow differently, that given that we took this document out to public comment with an east and a west range, that that would be the range of the boundary that we would need to consider. And if we were moving that line further west of Orient to Watch Hill, that would not be within the bounds of something we've taken out for public comment. Um, I'll turn to staff if they have some other feeling about it. I, I think you are correct. Um, I think the path of lease resistance in terms of 
how we choose an option for this would be to just delay action on this particular one until an annual meeting. And so if it is a friendly amendment, we could remove that from the original motion that John made and we could just take action on regional boundaries or not and then determine the Long Island Sound boundary at the next meeting once Mark has more information from what Jim said. But there is a narrow window of where that boundary would be as in informed in this document if we need to take another document out for public comment we'll have to face that down at annual meeting all right well let, let me get back to procedure here mark had asked for a motion to amend we went around and looked for so let me first get back to what we have to deal with is there any objection from the board about striking the sub option from mr clark's original motion Okay, seeing none, we don't have a need for Mr. Alexander's motion, and we're going to modify the original motion to remove N sub option B2. That brings us back to the motion before the board, move to approve option B regional management in section B1, section 4.1 regional boundaries. That's the option presently before the board. Discussion on the motion. Eric Reed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So it's my understanding that the only boundary that would be in question if this were to be voted favorably is that line. All the other boundaries are set. It's only a question of how uh, we're going to define that west end of Long Island going forward. Is that correct? I've west or east end, depending yeah, on how yeah, you're yeah. looking at it. Uh, that's my understanding, correct. So, uh, one end of the rainbow or the other or something in between, it's up to Connecticut and New York to come up with a proposal that would be acceptable to the board. Is that how this is going to have to go? That's our goal. Okay, thank you. Further discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing none, is there any objection to the motion? Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll take a vote on the motion. Uh, did you have anything else to add? John, go ahead. Yeah, I would just like to explain uh, New York's reason for objecting, objection, objecting to the motion. Um, so while we're largely in favor of regional management um, and a species like, ta like Tautog where 90% uh, of the harvest, at least in Long Island Sound region, is recreational, um, the resolution, so which means we're highly reliant upon uh, MRFs or MRIP data, and the resolution of uh, approximately one and a half states to base an assessment on and, and a 47% reduction on is inappropriate. Thank you. Thank you, John. And again, the goal is, well, we'll have more discussion about what the goal is under Long Island Sound Management. All right, any further discussion on this motion? Seeing none, we'll provide 30 seconds to caucus. Okay, motion to approve option B, regional management in section 4.1, regional boundaries. Motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Mr. Semino. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Looking for right hands. <laughs> well, I saw a left, a right, then none, then the other person. I was. The vote doesn't count anymore. Okay, you can put your hands down, please. All those opposed to the motion, raise your right hand. Abstentions. Null votes. Motion carries, seven in favor, one opposed, two abstentions, zero null votes. 
Okay, so this now brings us back to two previously tabled motions. We'll take the first motion that was tabled first, and that would be I know staff's going <laughs> to pop it right back up there for us. Okay, so the first. No, we're good. Okay, uh, move to approve option B, managing to the regional target F with sub option B2, board action within one year in section 2.7.1, fishing mortality target. Motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Mr. Blue. Discussion on the motion. Okay, seeing no discussion, is there any objection to the motion? Okay, seeing none, that motion carries. We'll give staff a moment to bring up the next tabled motion. Move to approve option B in section 2.7.4, the stock rebuilding schedule. That would allow for the stock rebuilding schedule to be developed via an addendum without a timeline. Discussion on the motion? Okay, no discussion on the motion. Oh, there we go, Joe. Yeah, I think as, as thank you. As, as uh, John mentioned, you know, it's, it's not much of a box necessarily, but um, it is a long time frame if we, we had a 10 year tie in here. And I would also assume that during that time we might see one or two new assessments coming through from when we started. So <laughs> not sure how we, we might be playing an entirely different ball game if we were shooting for a 10 year time frame and then got a new benchmark assessment. So I, I would rather leave it without. Thanks, Joe. Further discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing none, is there any objection to the motion? Okay, seeing none, the motion carries by consent. Okay, so next up, that brings us to the balance of section four. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to each region that we have. I'm going to turn to Tony briefly to give an update on where we are and what we hope to accomplish with each of those regions between now and September 15th to then pass information around to the board ahead of the annual meeting. Also, I'd like the individual states within that region to chime in with any comments that would be helpful to the board. Again, the intent is not to make motions on these today, but if there is some action the board wishes to take, it's certainly within the purview of the members here today. Uh, so with that, Tony, I'll turn to you. Uh, 4.2.2, Mass and Rhode Island recreational measures. Uh, the states of Massachusetts and Rhode Island are interested in exploring possible consistent regulations between the two states' fisheries. Um, there was some conflicting advice that came out during the public comment period on how to accomplish this, and the two states want additional time to um, craft possible measures and analyze those measures as well as discuss those possible measures with their advisory councils slash um, advisory bodies within the two states. I'll look to Master Rhode Island for further comments. Dan, Kiernan. <laughs> Yeah, um, when we first saw this uh, brought forward, it, it made sense, and I, I credit Jay and the other folks who put it together for having done the calculations. But upon further reflection, um, when we'd really like to test the potential of allowing a single fish during the popular summer fishing months 
since the stock we have up our way is not overfished and overfishing is not occurring, it seemed uh, overly harsh to go from three fish during our prime fishing months to zero. So we'd like to see if we can't retain a single fish during those months. We don't expect this to um, uh, amount to a lot of harvest, but I think in terms of uh, accommodating the lower end casual anglers, families, kids, um, those who are, aren't as familiar with the rules, uh, it's a better public policy in terms of maintaining access to a resource. And so that's our goal. What we want to do is work with uh, Ray, our chairman, and talk to uh, the Rhode Island and their council and see if we can craft a, um, a, a better uh, set of rules that still would, would be the same. Having the identical rules is really going to be valuable for the fishermen who fish the upper part of Narragansett Bay. We, in Massachusetts, we have the Fall River, Mount Hope Bay area, which is state waters, but it's part of Narragansett Bay. And we have problems uh, with enforcement and compliance um, when the rules are different. Um, it also will help MREP uh, because uh, you'll have uh, uh, you know, more consistent uh, rules between the two uh, uh, states and, and less confusion and less um, what would appear to be poaching, but it's just ignorance of the rules. Thanks for that, Dan. Any further discussion? Any questions from the rest of the board? Okay. All right, so next up we have Long Island Sound. Uh, again, as a result of the uh, regional assessment, Assuming a 50% probability of achieving the F target, which will remain a decision point in the document, that would call for a 47.2% reduction in harvest. Uh, not surprisingly, the public hearings certainly were adventurous, uh, to say the least. Um, I wish to thank staff for doing the best they could, as well as staff from New York. I'm sure it wasn't easy for them there as well. Uh, but I think that that certainly cause, was a cause uh, for my conversations with New York and Connecticut to have some further discussion and see what could be done to ameliorate that type of reduction, specifically when some of the recent in assessment information gave us some hope for some good news there. Uh, so based on discussions with staff as well as the states, there were a couple of different ideas that came forward for how to work through that. Uh, and again, I'll turn to Tony and then to the states in New York and Connecticut to further discuss it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as Adam said, it's a 47% reduction. This would um, be a severe social and economic impact on the fisheries and the communities in New York and Connecticut on Long, 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 Long Island Sound. So they are looking for some flexibility in achieving um, the reduction. The states are requesting that a more modest harvest reduction on the scale of 20 to 30 percent be explored. Um, the states would work with the TC to determine what impacts such of a lesson reduction would have on the probability of achieving an F target in a reasonable amount of time. The rationale for lowering the 47 percent reduction includes that the assessment indicates a strong 2013 and 2015 year class. Biomass has been increasing since addendum six measures were implemented in 2012. The three-year average harvest um, has an 18.3 percent percent standard error in the recreational data, which is somewhat large for a three-year three average. They are also looking to moderate what would be otherwise an extremely disjointed interregional <coughs> management measure. How they plan to approach this is looking at an alternative probability of achieving the target. This would likely be a lower probability. Um, and as well as extending the period in which the F reduction would be achieved from three years to five to ten years. They also would like to examine the sensitivity of the Long Island Sound Assessment, specifically in the context of the ACCSP facilitated um, percent standard error workshop and modeling efforts that have recently been held, as well as setting a required reduction considering both the three-year average of harvest as well as the percent standard errors um, informing a lower bound relative to the harvest target. 
um, and they would then bring back revised management options um, that would include but aren't limited to measures that might look at a three to four fish bag limit in consideration of a broader slot limit. And they'll work with the TC and the SAS to do this. Okay, thanks for that, Tony. So that gives some information on our reason for skipping over the probability of achieving F target as well as the reduction schedule uh, because both of those variables could impact uh, the reductions. Uh, I'll turn to New York or Connecticut, provide any other information they want to at this time. I'll, I'll say a few words. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to express my gratitude to uh, the chairman and his initiative in working with Tony to, to reach out to us um, with, with, with an opportunity to try to, to mitigate the impacts that, that we're going to feel in, in trying to achieve this 47% uh, reduction. Uh, as Adam indicated, um, our hearings were interesting. I think New York's probably more so than Connecticut, but um, there, this will cause some pretty severe social and economic impacts in Connecticut. Uh, I, I think it's not an understatement to say that our party charter industry is traumatized by the prospects of this. Um, to TOG make, an, make up an important or a key part of their fall fishery, and, and they stand to lose quite a bit of business uh, with regard to this. Also, our bait and tackle shops uh, enjoy a robust business uh, base from the TOG in, their, in the fall fishery. It brings people into their stores at a time when, when uh, there's not much else going on. So anything we can do um, you know, or anything that the, the, the board could accommodate for us to, to, to ease our our transition into this 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 period of rebuilding uh, would would be greatly appreciated. Uh, so thank you. Okay. Any other questions, discussion about Long Island Sound and how we plan to move forward? All right. And again, that's probably the heaviest lift that we've got here right now. Uh, I'll certainly be encouraging staff to encourage the states again to move forward as expeditiously as we can so we can get information out to the entirety of the board in advance of the annual meeting and make sure the appropriate reviews are done to inform that decision. Uh, New Jersey, New York bite, Tony? Not much there. It, not much there. We just, because three of the four regions decided to delay, we thought we would just delay all of these measures. <laughs> Any comments, discussion on New York, New Jersey bite? Okay, uh, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. Um, I hope I get this straight. Um, these guys will correct me if I'm wrong, but out of the, I think it was the Maryland Charter Boat Association had suggested a revision to some of the regulations and then the other areas might be interested in um, taking on those regulations as well or having somewhat consistent regulations amongst all of the states and so we needed time to go back and reevaluate or evaluate what that change in those regulations would mean um, and see if there is the possibility to have those consistent regulations. Comments from those states? Mike Luisi. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just add an, an explanation um, to where we stand. So <clears throat> at our public hearings, we were the options presented before us that would put Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia into a region had a seasonal closure for two months beginning on May 1st and ending at the end of June. And um, the public hearing that we had in Maryland, uh, fishermen were, were quite upset uh, at the fact that because black sea bass does not open until May 15th that there would be a two-week period of time when they could not fish for anything. Our, our transition in our state is from a tog fishery to a black sea bass fishery. And so we're going to, you know, Delaware and Virginia and Maryland, I think, are going to we'll plan to put forth some alternative options uh, to present, which close that gap of a closure period for, for the, the charter fleet. 
and not just the charter fleet, but recreational anglers as well. Um, but we do not see that that would be, it does not liberalize our fishing effort from where we currently are. There would still be a slight reduction, uh, even though we would open up those, those two weeks' time. And we'll, we'll follow up with staff on a proposal to include in the, in the next round of discussions. Thanks. Joe? Thanks, sir. Um, and Virginia has a different situation with the commercial fishery, so um, I think I will be putting forward something, and uh, uh, I may reach out to the TC right from the very beginning to figure out the best way forward with that. Okay, great. Any further discussion on Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia's development of their measures? Okay. Uh, seeing none, we'll move along to the next section, 4.3, commercial quota. So in section 4.3, commercial quota, that contemplates two options. A would be status quo, no specific commercial quota procedures. Option B would be commercial quota procedures, which include 4.3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, I'll turn to staff for further clarification, but as I understand this section, if option B is selected, that doesn't immediately implement quotas, but would allow for the regions to come together, form a working group, basically a representative from each of the state in the regions to then design the quota proposal program which would be reviewed by the TC and then approved by the board. That is correct, Adam, and it, it also actually allows for an individual state within a region to develop a quota themselves. Um, they would just need to bring it to their region to get approval by the region and then it would come to the board and the TC and it, they, that individual state would um, need to follow the procedures that are outlined in, in the document. So with regards to the other options here, rollover would be an option that would be offered in a given proposal and ultimately approved or disproved by the board in consideration of that proposal. Transfers would be allowed and overages would have deductions. Correct. Okay. John Clark. Move to approve option B, commercial quota procedures in section 4.3, commercial quota. Motion from Mr. Clark. Do I have a second to that motion? Bob Blue. Move to approve option B, commercial quota procedures in section 4.3, commercial quota. Motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Mr. Blue. Thanks to staff for getting these up so promptly. Discussion on the motion? Mark Alexander. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to get some clarification on this. Um, under option B, that would, you said that would not immediately mean that a state would have to implement quotas. It would mean that within a region, the regional partners would decide what they're going to do, right? Whether or not that includes a quota. Or not. Or, not. or an individual state could put forward that commercial quota program proposal for board approval. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion? Is there any objection to the motion? Seeing none, the motion is approved by consent. Thank you very much. Next section, 4.4, .4, commercial harvest tagging program on pages 84 through 86. Option A, status quo, no commercial harvest tagging program. Option B, implement a commercial harvest tagging program. 
And then depending on how we proceed here, we may have section 4.4.3, which would discuss tag application. Uh, discussion on this section, commercial harvest tagging program. Eric Reed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we've heard a lot of discussion in the past about the black market for TATAG, and I, I think we would be foolish to go down this road without a tagging program. Did you want to beat Delaware? <laughs> well, I like Delaware. They were good to me. I don't need to beat anybody, I suppose. Hey, he's doing such a fine job. I'll let him finish it off. Go on, man. Well, if you insist, Eric. <laughs> well, hang on. I got, I got John Maniscalco first. Don't worry. I'm not going to make a motion. Um, my question is, does having a tagging program mandate a quota? No, I don't. No, you don't have to. But if you do implement a quota, then you don't have to do, and you do the tagging program, then you don't have to do the size limits, et cetera, um, to to do any reductions if if those were required. But you don't have to. You would still need to account. All fishermen would still have to use the tags, though. Dan McKiernan. So a question for Tony. Um, there are other quota managed, I'm sorry, there are other uh, species within the ASMFC um, list that have tagging, and those tags have to be accounted for. So would we envision uh, a requirement that, that tags would have to be returned that weren't used? I think, I think if we move forward with the tagging program, we will have to do some additional work in order to make sure that the tagging program does not have any loopholes, um, uh, such as accounting for, accounting for those tags that are not used. Um, the, So I think there might be some additional work that we'll have to do in terms of the implementation plans for the tagging programs. Would that be a future addendum? So there are some specifics outlined here uh, with regards to tag allowance, uh, tag accounting, the document specifically says unused tags would be returned by February 15th. Uh, so there is that element. There's also the annual commercial tag report here that would be part of the compliance report. Uh, and then there are some specifics about what the tag would be, same single-use tag inscribed with year of issue, state of issue, unique number. So those items would be here. Um, in terms of how the program was further developed. Uh, I think management action via addendum or something is certainly an option moving forward. Uh, staff have any other thoughts about it? No, I don't think I have any other thoughts. I think that when the states put together their uh, state implementation plan for the tagging program that we can, if there are issues that come up that are not specified in the document um, that would provide for loopholes, then we may have to go forward with another docu document. But if we've covered it all here, then we should be okay. But I think the crux of it will be in how the states implement the, the tagging program themselves. Spoiler alert, I think I know why Dan's questioning that, but we'll get to that in the next agenda item. Further discussion uh, on the tagging program, and we still don't have a motion on it, but I know how to fix that. John Clark. This is motions. Yep, okay, move to approve option B in section 4.4 commercial harvest tagging program. Thank you, John. Do I have a second of the motion? 
Ross, thank you. Move to approve option B in section 4.4, .4, commercial harvest tagging program. Motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Mr. Allen. Discussion on the motion? Mike Luisi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be very brief. I just want to go on the record by saying that we, can, we absolutely support the need for this program, but I just want to be clear that it just adds another small but kind of it's one of those little pains that kind of sticks in your ribs it's the the burden to the agency again we probably have five people that harvest tog in maryland commercially and they can only bring in a recreational limit so at some points in the year they can bring two fish back to the dock so that guy is going to have to go find this little special gun wherever it might be and grab a tag or two and apply it keep track of it all throughout the year and return everything to the agency after the year's over. It's not a big deal. It's just a little little stick in the ribs. And you know, it's just one more thing. We're gonna support it. Our angler our fishermen actually support it, but on our end it's just one more thing to account for each year. I just want to go on record by saying that. Thanks. Further comments? Mark Alexander. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, in Connecticut, we're kind of facing the inverse of what Mike was just describing. You know, we have a few more than five fishermen, but according to the amendment, our commercial harvest target is, um, I don't know, 2,000 something hundred pounds, which equates to about seven to 900 fish. Um, implementing the infrastructure in, within our department to administer these tags for such a small number of fish and, how, and figuring out how we're gonna equitably distribute them to the, the available fishermen um, is it, just gonna be a challenge for us. It's, it's, it's a lot to do for, for what we see as you know, such a small commercial harvest potential. So it's just too much for us to, to uh, to try to administer for, for what we see getting out of it. Further discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing no further hands, uh, I'll just go ahead and ask for, well, first I'll say take a couple seconds to caucus, and then I'm going to ask for a show of hands on this one. If you're done caucusing, you can check traffic maps. Very bad. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll go ahead and move to approve option B in section 4.4, .4, commercial harvest tagging program. Motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Mr. Allen. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Thank you, you can put your hands down. All those opposed, please raise your right hand. Thank you, put your hand down. Abstentions, null votes. Motion carries nine to one. Thank you. Uh, so with that, that would then open the floor for section 4.4.3 tag application. Uh, option A would be harvester application at harvest or upon landing. Option B would be application by dealer. Discussion on this section and or motions. Start with Eric Reed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In my day job, I'm a fish dealer. Um, <laughs> And in Rhode Island, we have we do we tag striped bass, um, and the dealer does the tagging. The dealer does it, its own paperwork, and then we do the accounting for the tags at the end of the year, um, or at any period where we have to re-up tags. 
so there's some pretty good accountability there. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure New York does something different with striped bass tags where the fishermen actually get the tags. That's the only other fishery I have any, any experience with that the fishermen actually get the tags. Um, I'll qualify my remarks with that I buy dead fish. I don't buy live fish, and Tatag is a live, is, is a, is a live fish. You know, whether or not the harvester has to apply the tag because you get the trauma out of the way and then, you know, the fish survives better, I, I can't even begin to speak to that. Uh, but as far as the accountability of the tags, unless there's some enforcement issue with the location of, of the, the fishermen, although it says at the time of harvest or prior to unloading, so that kind of throws that argument out of the way. So I, I guess all that being said, from my standpoint in what I do, and I've tried to qualify that, I would just assume that the dealer applied the tag. Uh, I think at the end of the year when you've got a fisherman who's trying to find his tags that he can't find and however they're going to be attached, I think it's, it's, it's problematic. So I would prefer that the dealer does the tagging. That would be my, my preference. Dan McKiernan. Yeah, I'm going to... Um argue uh, counter to Eric. Um, the model for tagging fish is the striped bass uh, system that was developed by the state of Maryland. And if you recall, one of the, the, the findings is, is that um, there was a, a lot of poaching and, and interstate shipping of fish and, and the tagging system was identified as being really weak. And most states uh, have a fisherman uh, applied tag. Uh, Massachusetts has a has a dealer applied tag, um, and we're fairly confident about that, but I think with the small number of fishermen that we have, uh, I think with the propensity for, uh, for uh, storing up uh, live fish, which uh, often is done in this fishery, um, you know, car a lot of times these fish are carred uh, in the water, and I just think that the, uh, this fishery needs some serious accountability, and so I would prefer it go to a fisherman applied tag. Thanks, Dan. John Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I agree with Dan. I, in a state like Delaware, we don't really even have dealers that buy the live tag. I mean, it's going to be a very small harvest anyhow, but we would prefer that the tag be applied by the, at the time of harvest by the, the fishermen. Something else you'd like to add, John? It's that time again, huh? Okay, uh, move to approve. Option B, oh, um, excuse me, option A, move to approve option A in section 4.4.3 tag application. Thank you, John. Is there a second of that motion? Ray Kane. Thank you, Ray. Move to approve option A in section 4.4.3 tag application. Motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Mr. Kane. Further discussion on the motion? Okay, we'll give it 30 seconds to caucus. All right, we'll go ahead and take a vote on the motion. Move to approve option A in section 4.4.3, tag application. Motion by Mr. Clark, seconded by Mr. Kane. That might have been the third time I've read that. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, you can put those down, thank you. All those opposed, raise your right hand. Thank you. Abstentions, null votes. Motion carries nine to one. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so that completes all of the discussion items and options in the draft amendment. 
Uh, I want to thank everybody for getting through them as well as we did. Uh, I think we had good discussion on a lot of them. Uh, again, for those region-specific options, uh, I'll be encouraging staff on a regular basis uh, to make sure we get those on a timely basis. And again, I ask all the states to uh, respond to those uh, in a t request in a timely manner as well uh, so we can get things out to the board. Uh, is there any further discussion on any of the Amendment 1 topics? Okay, seeing none, that'll complete that agenda item and take us to agenda item five, election of a vice chair. The vice chair is currently vacant. Uh, we had Dave Simpson, uh, who has since retired from his position, uh, so that is vacant. Uh, I'm going to turn to Russ Allen for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It would be my pleasure to nominate Dan McKiernan, vice chair of this board. Do I have a second to that? John Clark. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, John. Dan, you have anything you'd like to add? Um, thank you, I think. Um, th this uh, plan was amended once in 21 years. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Hasn't been amended yet, Dan. We're, we're getting there. All right, thank you very much. Is there any objection to that motion? Okay, seeing none, congratulate Dan on vice chair and thank you very much. Uh, any other business to come before the board today? Oh, we never had that on the board. We'll get it. Okay. I, know, I got it right here. Motion to approve Dan McKiernan, vice chair of the Tautog Management Board. Motion made by Mr. Allen, seconded by Mr. Clark. Motion carried without objection by consent. Thank you. All right, having completed the business of the board, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Safe travels home.